and you'll change history. You'll destroy the Earth. This is the most critical period in Earth's history. The planet I'm from wants to help Earth survive. What if it turns out you're an invading alien from the future? I find it difficult to believe the mysterious Mr. Seven can be human. And yet, suppose he is. As our record tapes show, although never generally revealed, that on this date... ...show that it resulted in a new and stronger international agreement against the use of such weapons. Would you mind telling me who that is? That, Miss Lincoln, is simply my cat. Can't you understand that? I don't know anything. Enterprise to signal her on planet's surface. Identify self. Yep, yep. Hurrah. This is General Trelane. Ah, yes, I've been looking in on the doings on your lively little Earth. I want to know all about your campaigns, your battles, your missions of conquest. I want to learn all about your feelings on war and killing and conquest, that sort of thing. I zwei, drei, vier, gehen wir mit den Schiskewehr. Oh, come now, we're all military men under the skin. And how we do love our uniform. Apparently, you need another demonstration of my authority. Yes, quite. <laughs> Now, you will behave yourself hereafter, won't you? Or I shall be very, very angry. I've had enough of your games. Oh, the absurdity of these inferior beings. I haven't come to plead in your court, Trelane.
pompous. Immaterial. Those people have done you no harm. Inadmissible. We're living beings, not playthings for your amusement. Silence. This trial is over. You are guilty. On all counts, you are guilty. I order you, I order you! You broke it. You broke my sword! You've got a lot to learn about winning, Trelane. You dare to defy me! In fact, you've got a lot to learn about everything, haven't you? Trelane! This has gone far enough. Yeah, but you always stop me when I'm having fun. You're disobedient and cruel. We've told you before. It's time to come in now, Trelane. But I don't want to come in, and I won't. We said, come along. I'd never have any fun. Stop that nonsense at once. Who are you? Who is Trelane? You must forgive our child. The fault is ours. He must be classified, sir. God of war, Mr. Spock. Well, I hardly find that fitting. Then a small boy. And a very naughty one at that. In a private research laboratory in Glen Cove, Maine, called the Round Table Foundation, American Army physician and parapsychologist Andreas Poharich, also known as Henry Poharich, set up in 1948 to research the paranormal. Okay, and many, many different famous scientists and paranormal occult researchers and things all participated in this Round Table Foundation thing. In December 1952, Paharich brought into his laboratory an Indian mystic named Dr. D.G. Vinod, who began to channel the Nine. And they channeled this group of beings that they called the Council of Nine. Alistair Crowley and Anton LaVey both spoke of a group of evil spirits, entities collectively called 
the Nine. Crowley wrote, quote, I serve my great master Satan and the August Council of Nine. One day I was up in the upper Westchester County area visiting with the former vice president of the United States, Henry Wallace, who was a good friend of mine. We did a lot of agricultural experiments together. And we got stuck a little bit on the statistics of an experiment we were running, so I missed the train. I was going to take back to New York City. And uh, I missed it by about two hours, and I did have an appointment in New York City. So he rushed me to the nearest town, which is Pleasantville, New York, known for Reader's Digest, put me on a train there. I got on the train, and I sat down, kind of running all day, you know. And the last guy gets on the train, he comes away, and it's says, Dr. Vina. He sits next to me, he says, oh, he says, oh, time for, you know, he needs to talk a little high-pitched voice, and say, oh, it's time we ought to get together, right? And so, you know, I guess so we've been caught up with. Make a long story short, I invited him up to uh, uh, my laboratory in Maine, which is near Rockland, and he came in by plane, one of my colleagues had picked him up, he walked into the house, which is a very famous Stanford White, place huge and walked into the library and sat down without giving us any warning went into trance and started speaking we are nine principles and forces personalities if you wish and we planned this to the ultra blah 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 and they start t- telling us about who they were and what the history and if they're interested in helping us to further evolution okay that's how it all got started and uh so we got excited about this because it seemed like very high quality information, particularly the mathematics, which some of it to this day we have not solved. And my dad almost 30 years later. In the months before Dr. Vinod returned to India, a group met regularly to hear the Nine's channeled wisdom. Never known for their modesty, the Nine proclaimed themselves to be God, stating, quote, God is nobody else than we together, the Nine Principles of God. Um, you know, and there was minor version, more minor predictive programming all throughout Star Trek too. You know, you have the phones, the cell phones, the communicators, uh, everything with the doors, the scanners. You know, all the medical things. Just a lot of predictive programming there because they collaborated with NASA, but definitely on a large scale predictive programming that these beings from outside are going to help us evolve spiritually and through Geller the nine alerted Poharich to his life's mission which was to use Geller's talents to alert the world to an imminent mass landing of spaceships that would bring representatives of the nine okay so then Geller became like a big superstar and he bowed out he fell out he got away from this group so Poharich had to go on and find other channelers to get his messages from these beings so he joined up with this wealthy race car well-known race car driver sir john whitmore and florida-based psychic and healer phyllis schlemmer and phyllis schlemmer starts channeling these beings unclean spirits we're going to study that from the bible coming up later we're going to define what all this is canadian billionaire edgar bronfman's family Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, CIA MK Ultra program, New Age authors Lyle Watson, J.J. Hurtak, Richard Hoagland, murderer Ira Einhorn, the unicorn killer, film and television producer Gene Roddenberry. Lab 9, they called it. Gene Roddenberry became part of that circle in 1974 and 1975. Roddenberry wrote a script for an entire summer under the influence of a psychic entitled The Nine about a group of aliens who would invade the earth and establish a new kingdom. And it wasn't picked up, but he still couldn't sell these. He had these really weird screenplays he was developing for these beings. After meeting with this group and listening to these channeled messages from these unclean spirits for two or three years straight and uh, then he kind of took over his mindset even further he was a atheist before he was a humanist before 
He mocks and scoffs at God. The man is a blasphemer. But this is when he really began to pick up speed and this became like his little mission. And it's even further in with all the movies, the films, are when he really begins, you know, even further with these concepts. But even in the show, they're always running into these beings that are godlike and then ruining, you know, showing they're not really gods. They're just powerful aliens and it's misunderstood. And then mankind triumphs over them and shows them up and Captain Kirk beats them and... What is it you want? You will worship me as your fathers did before you. You want to play God and call yourself Apollo. That's your business. But you're no God to us, mister. I said you would worship me. All right, mister. You want to worshipers? You've got enemies. Fire those faces. That's an order, Mr. Spock. All phaser banks. Fire. loves his children. Did I ask so much? We've outgrown you. You asked for something you can no longer give. You were right. Athena. You were right. The time has passed. There is no room for gods. But it was Vol who put the fruit on the trees, caused the rain to fall. Vol cared for us. You learn to care for yourselves with our help. And there's no trick to putting fruit on trees. You might even enjoy it. You learn to build for yourselves, think for yourselves, work for yourselves, and what you create is yours. That's what we call freedom. You'll like it a lot. And you learn something about men and women, the way they're supposed to be. Caring for each other, being happy with each other, being good to each other. That's what we call love. You're like that too, a lot. You and your children. What are children? Uh, little ones look like you. They just go on the way you're going, you'll find out. <laughs> hey, Jim. I want you to hear this. Captain, I'm not at all certain we did the correct thing on Gamma Triangle 6. We put those people back on a normal course of social evolution. I see nothing wrong in that. Captain, you are aware of the biblical story of Genesis. Yes, of course I'm aware of that. Adam and Eve tasted the apple, and as a result, we're driven out of paradise. Precisely, Captain. And in a manner of speaking, we have given the people of Vile the apple, the knowledge of good and evil, if you will, as a result of which they, too, have been driven out of paradise. Doctor, do I understand him correctly? Are you casting me in the role of Satan? Not at all, Captain. Is there anyone on this ship who even remotely looks like Satan? I am not aware of anyone who fits that description, Captain. You know, Mr. Spock, I didn't think you would. written in another character who wasn't even human, an alien who looked like Satan himself, complete with pointy ears. The concept right there, you know, of anti-God, and they've always had that from the start. Okay, many of the concepts found their way into the early Star Trek movies and the Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, Deep Space Nine, and in the quotes from these beings, Tom and the Nine and all that, they they say, where are they from? And they answer and say, deep space. I mentioned Phyllis Schlemmer. This is from her actual website. 
the only planet of choice. Don't recommend you go there because she's selling this satanic book that she wrote that's all based on the channeling of the Nine, the Council of Nine. So, did you know, this is right off of her site, did you know that Gene Roddenberry researched background material for his Star Trek series with a distinguished international group? Using a meme from, their answer was, the zone you call cold in deep space. Sound familiar? Deep Space Nine became a hugely popular television sequel to Star Trek. For over 30 years, Phyllis, the Nine, and this multinational group have collaborated to investigate, among other deep questions, the origins of man. Now, I mean, you know, sound like a conspiracy theory? You know, over 30 years, they're, they're collaborating with these devils and demons, you know, these unclean evil spirits to make, you know, all kinds of messages come out into the culture because that's what the nine wanted. They wanted their message propagandized, as Roddenberry said in his own words. He wanted to propagandize everyone with his, with his philosophies that came from uh, the nine. I saw in this show a chance to uh, say things I wanted to say and propagandize my own ideas. And, and that's good. Writers should do that. All artists should do that. They should boldly say what they think. The result is a remarkable book. Oh, The Only Planet of Choice, Essential Briefings from Deep Space, a unique document of transcripts of conversations with the Nine. Well, that'd be a real satanic thing to read. I don't recommend it. Or lesser than you. It's only important that you've been given this marvelous opportunity to enjoy this trip, to learn from it, and in my case, write about it. Perhaps you know where I'm leading. On a trip like this, and it is a trip, its loveliness is not in the sameness of people and things, but in their incredible variety. Eventually, this led me to the Star Trek statement, Idik, infinite diversity from infinite combinations. Thank whatever created us, we are different, each of us and everything around us. To the end of time, if it ever does end, no combination will ever come up quite the same. That's quite a travel package. All of this is how Star Trek began. And it's also something of what it's about. I am an alien. <laughs> and so are you. And yet, and this is the loveliest thing of all, somehow we're also part of each other and part of everything that is. Do you think mankind needs saving of some sort? Oh, I, I think my own philosophy is uh, that uh, mankind has within himself what he needs. I, 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 I rather think that uh, uh, whatever God is, we are all a part of it. Even the fact that the man is an atheist and he believes in propagandizing the youth with his philosophy. I don't need your philosophy. I'm a born-again Christian. I don't want your philosophy. I don't need it. Scoffers, mockers, it's worldly. Psalm 1 Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. We, we need to avoid the scoffers. Avoid it. Proverbs 4, 14 Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Keep away from it. It's dangerous. All right? Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Praise God. Psalm 119, verse 36. Incline my ear unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. It's all vanity, okay? And it's all lies. It's all based on lies from these evil spirits. Okay, Deuteronomy 18.11. I'm just going to... We just need to go over a little bit about what these beings really are, who they really are. Um, they're not 
ancient wise beings that want to help guide humanity into the next stage of evolution and spirituality. They're not uh, benevolent beings. They want to help us. They're liars. They're evil servants of Satan. They're enemies of the Most High God. And that's who Gene listened to his whole life. Deuteronomy 18, 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. It's all an abomination to God. Consulting with familiar spirits. Leviticus 20, verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Okay, God hates contacting these evil spirits. Leviticus 19.31 Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. That's what this is, Phyllis Schlemmer, going into a trance and getting channeling messages from the nine. They're evil angels. They're fallen angels. They're, they're referred to as devils, unclean spirits, evil spirits. And we're going to see all those words used here in the New Testament. And Jesus Christ has power over them. Matthew 9, 32. As they went out, behold, they brought to him, to Jesus, a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It, has, it was never so seen in Israel. Mark 5, 8-9. through 9. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. That's funny. You have one unclean spirit answering. He's kind of a spokesperson for a bigger group. Huh. Kind of reminds me of Tom from the Nine. Council of Nine, yeah. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall, thou, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay? And that's what these beings are. Tom might even be Satan. I don't know. They're liars. But it's either Satan or one of his angels, one of his devils. Evil spirits. Luke 7, 21. And in that same hour, he cured, it's talking about Jesus Christ, the Lord. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Praise the Lord. Luke 8, 2. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities... Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Is it evil spirits, devils, same thing. You know, this is real stuff. That's the sad thing, is all these trekkers and trekkies, they actually have a faith-based religion in all this. They love to talk about the humanism, 50 years of humanism, and Gene Roddenberry, and Star Trek, and everything is so wonderful. It's their religion. And they believe in all this, boldly go where everything beyond and everything, and they, 
they're into the idea with the UFOs and all that stuff is satanic occult activity that that is spiritual activity there's UFOs and stuff like that it's a deception taking over the world a lot of that stuff is real but it's not aliens it's not aliens that are in the other dimension it's angels God's angels and it's the devil's angels the evil angels that followed him when he rebelled against God they're unclean spirits. They're devils. And that's where Roddenberry got his whole world view from. From the Council of Nine. Even if Gene Roddenberry never met John Whitmore and Phyllis Schlemmer and Andreas Puharic, the psycho doctor. Even if he never contacted with the Council of Nine and listened to their channeled devil messages... It's still Antichrist, and this is why. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. The man was an atheist and a proud humanist. That's the spirit of Antichrist. He was a God-hater. He spent his career promoting plots and shows and ideas of mankind triumphing over God-like beings. They make a mockery of the God of creation. But I want people to consider that these forces, these beings are real. The Council of Nine, and there's much, many more than nine. <laughs> They're very active in the world. Satan is called the god of this world. He's doing a lot in this world. And the entertainment industry is his pulpit. The TV is his preaching. The movie theater is his evangelism. The radio station is his sermon. I don't care if it's country or rap hip-hop or rock or metal or jazz or what you're what you're listening to it has a spiritual side to it Ephesians 6 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places So I thank you for watching, and I pray that you can share this with people. If there's a lot of big Star Trek fans out there, I know I'm going to get hate mail, and I'm going to, you know, the world hates Christ. The world hates God's Word, but this is for those who have ears to hear. And I'll be praying that God can use this to wake some people up. And, um, and I thank you for watching.